Hi, I'm reggae girl Marlo Sweatman. You're watching Eddie Vision TV. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you to you, the FIFA Women's World Cup, Australia and New Zealand. This is the post-match press conference for match 56 between Colombia and Jamaica. I would like to welcome coach Lauren Donaldson. Uh, please note that we have interpretation in both English and <coughs> Spanish. If you plan on asking the question in Spanish, please announce beforehand so that the coach would put the translation on. Uh, if you have a question, raise your hand, wait for the microphone, state your name, your organization, and then ask your question. Uh, questions? Anyone? Joe Lynch for ESPN, asking my question in English. Coach Lawn, come to the end of the tournament for your side. Could you basically just sum up? your emotions that you're feeling right now, how proud are you of what your group's been able to accomplish in this tournament? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I'll just give um, Colombia credit. They were better than us tonight, and um, I have to, you know, give them that credit. Um, so, and just summing it up, um, for us, just with coming in with no games, it, it, um, I feel very happy for the players that they could perform at this level without getting adequate games to play. So I am I am very pleased with them. And you know what, they gave it everything tonight. We weren't very, very good tonight, but you know, that's football. And so they, 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 they should be proud of themselves. And I'm very proud of them. Warren Jonathan Temple from the Philadelphia Inquirer. We were talking yesterday, you brought it up yourself about how things went after the 2019 tournament ended. And I know that it's a little close, you know, close right now in the moment to things just ending. But what do you hope happens now and to, to really get this sustainable for the long term? Yeah, and that's a good question because, you know, again, I told you I'm in, in Jamaica. I mean, the 2019, nothing happened. So obviously, you know, maybe with some help from <clears throat> maybe even the government, even though FIFA and the government don't really mix, but hopefully we all can come together now and try to figure something out so we don't do something agi party all the time so we can have some we have some decent young players so we need to have a good transition going in and start preparing for the for the future tomorrow you know start looking at stuff Lord, Jeff Kasuf, with the guardian and equalizer in the us um, speaking of that future a quick turnaround to another very big game for the group uh, with, a, with another tournament you know around the corner um, what do you say in terms of, you know, how to get them immediately ready after maybe a disappointment like this, and, and what do you look for in that in that game coming up? Yeah, but as I as I always say, it's a disappointment, and everybody who is not here is disappointed. Only one team's gonna win, so the sun is gonna come up tomorrow. So we have to be ready to go and just get on with our life. So. You know, just again, tell them, you know, magnificent job. No, Nobody expected it, expected this. So let's kind of build on what we um, started and see what happens in the next tournament. Hi. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Um, Tamara Griffin with The Athletic. Yesterday we were talking about a lot of the cultural similarities between the two teams in terms of how you show up on the field, the joy with which you play. I think tonight we saw... a another set of similarities in terms of the grit and the intensity. Um, did it feel like a game of margins to you? And if so, beyond the obvious of the goal itself, um, what do you think it was that, that sort of gave Columbia the edge in the end? I just think they had a better game. I don't think nothing, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't anything really tactic, tactically. I think technically they were just better than us tonight, just in, in terms of the passing and don't giving the ball in bad spots. You know, we, you know, we made some bad mistakes. But um, I, again, credit them. You know, they were ready to play. I think I, I think we were ready to play, but you know, <clears throat> they were just better on a night like this. Um, Coach, forgive me if I've got this wrong, but looking up your contract status, your contract appears to come to an end after this coming tournament. Um, these coming Olympic qualifiers. Would you like to sort out an extension to agree to something before that tournament starts? Do you want to stick around with this team in the long run? Well, I mean, 
that's a that's a question when we get to the end of that road um you know i mean it's i tell you we work in a country sometimes it's a lot of chaos so we, we're going to figure that out and see what we want to do i mean maybe i don't know maybe maybe i have had a good run so after the september game then you know the olympic qualifier i don't think anybody's going to do anything before that knowing the way you know, we work in Jamaica. I don't think it's going to happen. Anything going to happen before, but I think we we'll wait until after that and we we'll see what happens. Would you like to? Well, that would be a discussion. If, you know, you know. I mean, if I would like to, it's my country. I think that we, we need to sit down and sort some stuff out. You know, so yeah. Questions for Lauren. My name is Candace Buckner with the Washington Post. Uh, kind of piggybacking off his question, but for the sport in Jamaica, what do you hope that young girls? Uh, take away from watching the reggae girls. Yeah, and um, you know, it's 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 it, it, it's something we hope go well. And, you know, currently Cidella Mar Marley has a program in Jamaica that she's actually running, okay, and it's a very good program for young girls. And hopefully now we can get more 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 young 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 ladies involved in the program. And and I think the girls watching this and people are up, you know, win or lose, somebody you know. They, they get something out of it. So what I'm saying is I hope everybody now in Jamaica can embrace women's football and just make sure that from the primary school all the way up, you know, can say, okay, we want to do this. Lauren, you've got a lot of players on this team who are collegians in the U.S. or unattached professionally club-wise at the moment. How do you hope to get more of your players into full-time, better club environments to further raise the level. Yeah, I mean, and that's a good thing because we have we have we have a lot a lot of collegiate players, and you know, I mean, most of these teams we're playing are all full professionals, you know, from they were 16. So we still have a lot of college players. So hopefully, you know, we can start getting some of our players, maybe even at a younger age group, and just figure it out how they're going to play football. Because I I also think education is very 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 important. And you know, can they play? And you know, get a get a get a college degree. I mean, and that might be the next thing that we have to look at. How can we do that? So yeah, you're right. We need to get them in an environment where they're playing professional 24/7. Um, coach, maybe building off the back of that, being based here, speaking to some of the figures involved in the local athletic women competition, they've been speaking about. There's been some interest in some of your players. Do you anticipate? Any of your players sticking around and signing contracts here in Australia in the A-League women competition? Yeah, I, you know, I would say, you know, it's it's a strong possibility. You know, I mean, they see they see the environment in Australia, and you know, they like it. I mean, if I was a player, I would be like, yeah, put my ah, oh, sign me. But you know, <laughs> I don't play. So so hopefully, hopefully, some of them can stick around and you know, start playing at that level. Donaldson, uh, Fernando Alegre Barros uh, from Brazil, started Sao Paulo group. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Your team did a very good football, very good World Cup. But now it's time to analyze why Jamaica lose and what is the lessons that you got from this tournament? What this tournament can improve the quality of the level, the level of the game of your team? Thank you very much. Yeah, that's a loaded question. I mean, I think that's, you know, I mean, I would love to answer that question, but that's one of those questions we got to sit down and just analyze what happens and how we prepare and, you know, how many games we had. I mean, our big problem coming in, we had no games, you know. We had no games, international games. So, I mean, the international games, first international game we, we have had in, you know, four or five months was here, okay, when they blow, or six months when they blow the whistle, that was our first game. So all we did was... A few, a few camps. So, I can do that by getting more games and getting players better prepared. You know, if we have games, you know, I mean, like, you know. So, and I think because they're gonna change the way the Caribbean football and carnival and all that stuff, we will play some more international games. So we we will use a lot of those games when they come up the Gold Cup for the women's and all that as preparation. So that's good stuff for women. Lauren Dictamano from Keep Up Australia. Um, going into this game, did you have conversations about how to try and nullify that crowd? I mean, it was obviously very much a, a Colombian dominant sort of crowd today, but were there conversations about how to handle that given, you know, what you guys were coming up against today? 
Yeah, I don't think that phased us. Who, 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 I mean, you know, it's a lot of yelling in the crowd. Maybe they think it was people cheering for them because it was all yelling. So, you know, I don't think the crowd has anything to do with this match. I mean, I don't think, you know, we're Jamaican. We're not phased by a crowd or anything. It's just, again, we just went out there and we just didn't play to, to our standard. And, you know, Colombia just played better. But the crowd has nothing to do with it now. Any more questions? Yeah. I, I don't know what was asked, I'm just getting here, but coach, um, the team in Jamaica proud, I mean, the whole nation is behind us. Um, you mentioned um, Conway Ball merging with Conway Cup, so much is coming up on. So how far do you see this team going and um, can they get back here next time? Well, I mean, hope, I mean, with more games now and those games we have to play them, you know, we're hoping that we can um, get more, a bigger pool of players and develop players and, you know, I mean, it's always our hope to get back to the World Cup. So, you know, we will just, you know, let it be and we will just see. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys.